given a histogram of the heights of 150 plants. Frequency density on the left and on the y-axis and height on the x-axis. Remember, frequency density is the frequency divided by the class width. If we want to get back to the frequency, then we find the area underneath the bars. So we know the total area is essentially going to be 150. And we're asked to find the probability that x is between 20 and 30. So essentially this area here divided by the total area. That's what this is referring to. Now we don't have a scale to begin with, so we're going to need to, to make one. Uh, there, I'll talk about another way of doing it in a minute, but I'm just going to say that this is x. And then this would be 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, etc. So what I can do is just then work out the area in terms of x. 10 times 2x is going to be 20x. And if we do that for all of these, I'm just going to write on what we get. I worked these out earlier. And finally, 10x. So I can add all of these up. And this is also something I did earlier. You know, just, just add the numbers in your calculator, which gives 750x. And that means that 750x is equal to 150. x is 150 over 750 which turns out to be one fifth or 0 0.2. So it's actually going up in 0 0.2s. I could even just add on these as one, two, three, four. So back to this probability then, we've got 110x times 0 0.2, and that is gonna be 110 times 0 0.1 is 11, so 0 times 0 0.2 is 22, so it's 22, probability that x is between 20 and 30 is 22 over 150. Which is 11 over 75 or 0.146 recurring. Which rounds to 0.147 to three significant figures. So this is, a, this is a good method. If you get a question where you can nicely split the histogram into bigger boxes, then you could just say that one big box, you know, just you could basically count up all the big boxes and then set that equal to say 150. But in this case, we get all these little bits. So it's a bit, a bit harder. We could of course count the small boxes, but actually, because I defined x as being the height of one square, that is essentially how many boxes I have here, 20 boxes, 110 boxes. So I could have said that 750 boxes was equal to 150 and worked out what one box was worth. That's absolutely fine. It just felt a bit easy, you know, like made more sense in this case to get the scale, um, which I did along the left-hand side. And Sam suggests that distribution of x can be well modelled by a normal distribution with mean 40 and variance 100. Give a brief justification why we can do this. So the ideal answer, the quickest answer, is to say that it's roughly bell-shaped. Not exactly, but roughly. I, it looks a little bit like this. When I did this question, I actually didn't do enough. I said that it was symmetrical, but you know, there's loads of distributions like that distribution is symmetrical and it, you know, I don't, or, or like a uniform distribution is symmetrical. Um, and that is not enough to say that it's a normal distribution. If you say symmetrical, then you also have to say two other things. You need to say that it peaks in the middle because that is a symmetrical distribution, but with two peaks, it's got two modes. So you need to say that, and then uh, you also say, you need to say that it tails off um, at either side. So those three things would be would be required just for that one mark in B part one. So let's try and remember roughly bell-shaped.
give a brief justification for the choice of the parameters. So let me do this down here, B part two. Well, um, the distribution is symmetrical about 40, pretty much. Well, roughly symmetrical, I should suppose I could say. So mu is going to be approximately 40. Oh, okay, I wish I'd said the word roughly symmetrical now. So just imagine that I'd written that. And then what about the variance? Well, for a normal distribution, this is a little fact you need to know. Um, approximately all of the data is contained within three standard deviations of the mean. It's, uh, it's like two thirds of the data within one standard deviation, 95% within two, and pretty much all of the data. I think it's like 99.7% to be precise, but that we can just say basically all of it. So in this case, where I've got a mean, we can see that the data here is a width of 30, and that is going to be three standard deviations. So three times sigma is going to equal 30. So sigma is going to equal 10, and the variance is then, I should say approximately, the variance is going to be approximately 100 and it is the same the other side as well so there we go that is our justification for those parameters we're now asked to use sam's model to find this probability okay just going to write down because the one you put in your calculator is always the standard deviation so that is going to be 10 and we can go to distribution then to normal CD, lower limit between 20 and 30. Like I said, 10 for this one, 40 for this one. And that gives 0 0.13590. Or to three significant figures, one, sorry, not one, 0 0.1. Three six, so it's not that close to 0 0.147, but we're making a lot of assumptions here. Remember, we're trying to fit this thing, and it's yeah, it's not going to be exact, but it's hey, it's not bad. Okay, moving on. So Nina, so that was um, who was it? I've lost who was Sam's model. Okay, to to basically use the graph, try and get the mean and the standard deviation and, and fit a normal distribution to it. So Nina suggests a different model. She uses the midpoints of the classes to calculate estimates for the mean and standard deviation. Okay, so we've got to do that. We've got to use that model to find the probability. So first of all, we need to um, get the, the midpoints and the frequency and everything. So I'm just going to sort of start this off and then I'll write them in. So the midpoints are here, here, here. So um, 15, 25, 32.5, 37.5, 42.5, 47.5, 55, and 65. And then the frequencies associated with those are 100x, where x is say 0 0.2. So um, this one would be 20, for example. We can write them down as a table. So I've got my midpoints, or I'm going to say um, I'm dealing with height. So I'm going to say heights, the midpoints of the height. Okay, these are the ones that I said a minute ago.
and then working out the frequencies just times each of it like work out each of those exit um, those x terms with x substituted in is 0 0.2 remember we got that 22 for the first time okay and now we can put that in our calculator so it's under statistics one variable which takes us to a frequency table now there is a chance that you haven't got frequency turned on on your calculator if you haven't you need to go to shift then to setup go all the way down to statistics and then turn frequency on and then you'll be okay right i'm just going to type these in Feel free to fast forward through this, but you might just want to do it as I'm doing it. Why not? Okay, nice. That bit sorted. And then to option, one variable calculation, and we get lots of useful statistics. So the mean, which I think we called M, is going to be 39.43 recurring. Now it's hard to know what accuracy to use. We're trying to get an answer to three significant figures. So I'm going to write down it to, to just five, first five digits. And then we're asked for, sorry, I think I called it, um, it's now called S, which is this one here. This, it's not actually the S, be really careful. They've called it S in the question, but that S is a slightly different thing. That's when you are dealing with a sample and you end up dividing by N minus one instead of N. So it is, it is the sigma, that's really important. 10.340. So we see we get similar parameters to before, but you know that is going to affect the, affect the results. Okay, so that is Menina's model, normal distribution, thirty nine point four three three, and then ten point three four zero squared. Then we can work out this probability by substituting those into the, just like we did before with the, into the distribution. I don't know why, I seem to get stuck with this. Uh, if I turn, okay, I have to press on to go back. Okay, we're back to doing 20 to 30. But this time, instead of 10, we've got 10.3 or zero, I can just ignore that part. 39.433. And we get 0 0.1507. Or to three significant figures, 0 0.5151. So this method has actually got us a closer probability to the actual probability. We're now asked to complete the table. So we've already got, remember, okay, Sam's model is the original one, then Nina's model is this new one. We've got 0 0.151, we just found that one, and from above we had 0 0.136. So those two are sorted. And you just have to use your calculator to get the rest of them. So I'm just going to do one more. Because uh, Nina's model is going to be quite quick because I've already got all the parameters in. So 40 and 45, which gives us 0 0.183 for three significant figures. So if you do that for 45 to 50 as well, you should get 0.142. And you have to change the parameters and go back to Sam's model and we get 0 0.191. 
times 0 0.150. Actually, at this point, I've realized you know, this is a really good question about trying to fit a statistical model to real life data. Because um, we've done it in two different ways. And we can, in the last part of this question, it's asking us to, you know, talk about both methods. So there's no like, there's not always like a best model. Sometimes there's a best model for certain situations. So we're asked to consider different values of x in the table to discuss how well the models fit. And what we can see is that Nina's model fits really well for, for these like middle values. Um, and actually, sorry, for the, for the lower values. Yeah, and actually that's the conclusion I wrote. Nina's model fits best for lower x. And then Sam's model actually fits best for the um, larger values. For example, here, this value is quite close to the actual 0.193. So yeah, you can you know, say something along those lines. Now here's the, I'm just going to show you the mark scheme. So these are the things that are expected. You need to make two comments, uh, one about Nina and one about Sam. So something along these lines. Well done.